All right, hello and welcome. So let's talk about Neza. So this is the new frame introduced that comes from Sorties. So considering Sorties are the main end game that you only get to run once a day, and this is the only way to get Neza unless you buy him, this frame better be pretty good, right? Uh, unfortunately, that is not the case. Uh, please, please, do not spend like a hundred platinum in trading for this frame. Please do not. I implore you, it is not worth it. A hundred percent. I will guarantee you that. Uh, like, unless you just really, really love how this frame looks, just there are a lot of other things you could play that are way better. Uh, specifically, like Rhino does just about everything this frame wants to do better than this frame. Uh, and Rhino is significantly easier to get. Even Rhino Prime is significantly easier to get, uh, especially if you trade. Um, so there are problems with Neza's abilities. Um, his one, this damage doesn't matter. The fire, not, none of the fire trail, whatever. Like this explosion damage that you have to activate with Blazing Chakram, that's not really effective. Blazing Chakram itself, you throw it and you can teleport to it, but like that's not your motive. Like the speed increase here and being able to teleport, that's not a fast thing that you can do. Your Chakram isn't thrown fast enough and doesn't move fast enough for it to be like a really quick teleport that you can use in a pinch. Uh, and this 20% speed increase is like locked. You can't increase it, so you can't get that fast. So his first two abilities are kind of bust in that way. Uh, I'm sure at low levels they do something, but I'm not really interested in that. I'm sure it's okay at best. Moving on. His three uh, is a worse iron skin. Just straight up, it's a worse iron skin. Uh, you don't have iron trap metal to be able to recast it to actually protect you. Uh, and actually dangerous enemies will just blow right through this given half a second chance and just murder you super hard. Uh, it takes about like two seconds for you to die uh, extra whenever you're using Warding Halo uh, in its base form. Bumped up like this with over 200% strength, takes a little bit of time. Uh, so that's kind of what this is revolving around because you need to actually survive to be able to kill your opponents. Uh, Divine Spears, which is what I originally thought was going to be like, oh, well, that's his main form of crowd control. He's not that strong, but between warding Halo and being able to crowd control enemies, that should be pretty good, right? Turns out, uh, no, uh, because Divine Spears has a very long casting animation and then an animation at the end of it also that will interrupt other things that you're doing so that it can play uh not worth it uh it's also really really inconsistent and doesn't work when you need it to like let's say against uh a heavy gunner standing within like a mile vicinity of an ancient healer uh ancient healers make it so that divine spears does nothing but just impale only them and makes their allies immune to knockdowns which for some reason divine spears counts as a knockdown uh Let's actually show that off first, because it's really, <clears throat> it seems weird, it's really shitty. Uh, so this this is the build I was using to be like, oh, well, Divine Spears, just maximize the shit out of that. Obviously, that should be pretty good. Uh, no. Yeah, let's just let's get two Corrupted Ancients and four Butchers. That'll, that'll show it. That'll be fine. Uh, this is with natural talent for casting, so... Yeah, there it is. I uh, put them on spears. No one else cared. Uh, and then they hit me. And you, you die super fast from that, as it turns out. Uh, yeah, not a reliable thing. Uh, obviously, butchers usually are not a problem. They were I allowed them to be a problem to show that they didn't get stopped for nothing. Uh, but whenever there are bombards and heavy gunners and also corrupted ancients around, it becomes a problem very, very quickly. Uh, and obviously not ceasing, like, a pet. Like, if you're, if you cast this and you expect all the enemies around you to be up on spears, but the enemies, whenever you turn left in this hallway, were next to an ancient healer, those enemies are now a huge threat and you didn't know about them because you thought they were on spears. That's a problem. 
uh, making it an inconsistent ability that is not worth building around. Not to mention, nullifiers also don't really, they're not making you happy, but all frames have to deal with that. Uh, Nezha just has even more negatives on her crowd control AoE. So this is the build that I go with. Uh, it's important to note that I'm using Maglev because of Nezha's passive that makes her frictionless. She has significantly less friction or slide. Uh, it makes her super fast whenever you slide dash. So slide dashing used to be like the way to get around in parkour 1.0 uh, in a lot of ways. Like this plus like front flip jumping was the way to go. Uh, because of Nezha's passive, he slides around like fucking greased up deaf guy and it's really hard to catch him very fast. So. At least he's got that going for him. Uh, but let's grab some energy and get to this test. Uh, I'm using Soma Prime and Lex Prime because they're they're good weapons. There's going to be a lot of hiding here, even with this on. Uh, oh, and just to show how long the fucking Force cast is, abysmally long. You will get shot to death so fast doing that shit. Oh, and keep in mind, if I had actually hit someone, there's another animation at the end that's pretty long. Hey, let's grab some energy. And let's set this up. So this still is not going to be particularly difficult for me. Uh, because I can move around so fast. And turns out movement is pretty good. But movement is about the only thing you've got going for you. So, it's not fantastic. Uh, basically, if you make like one mistake and get caught by a big enemy, you evaporate uh, into the ether. So, I will be attempting to not make such a mistake. Let's go. Excuse me. slide through enemies very easily, which is a huge benefit, I suppose. Okay, healers are dead, and this makes my game significantly easier. Still incredibly important as this frame. I gotta fill up the map. In that radiation proc, there it is. You all fight amongst yourselves. Get rid of the bombards that way. Shots whenever they're up on these spears, also a downside. They are vulnerable though for that amount of time. There's that animation that I am forced into.
also, this 3 is really annoying. I hate how it looks. It's, like, it's really annoying to, like, have that on your screen at all times. I don't like looking at it. More of a personal gripe. Uh, but yeah, that's all the enemies. Uh, a lot of it is just sliding from cover to cover and then using your 3 as, uh, like, a hit scan blanket, essentially, against, like, little tiny enemy fire. Obviously, that only works for so long. Uh, not a frame I would ever bring to a sortie, uh, like, under any circumstances, basically. <laughs> Which is kind of ironic, considering where he comes from. Uh, but yeah, really mediocre, like, playable, but it, there, there's no reason. Like, if you want to go fast, Volt, Loki, Loki is a really safe fast. If you want this kind of set of abilities, get Rhino. Rhino's 4 is just straight up better than Nezha's 4. His 2 is straight up better than Nezha's 3. Rhino doesn't need to teleport around. He has a buff for his team instead, which I would argue is significantly better. And, like, Rhino's not that slow if you use bullet jump mods, so there's not really a need for a speed increase. Uh, I don't know. That's more personal preference, I suppose. Uh, but I just can't really justify a reason that I would ever actually want to use this frame other than testing it to find out why I would want to use this frame. Which is kind of sad, because this is the hardest Warframe to farm. One sortie a day, like, one sixteenth chance of getting the thing you need, I think it is. Maybe it's a fifteenth. Uh, you have to hit that three times. Um... Uh, yeah, 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 that's definitely probably the longest farm other than, uh, waiting. Well, yeah. If, if you consider waiting part of a farm, then Vauban, I guess, would probably be the longest on average, but, uh, this one requires you to do the sortie every single day, so I, I think that's, that's more intensive than just waiting. Um, but yeah. yeah, not a great frame. Not worth buying. Please do not buy this frame, uh, with Plat on the, on the, uh, the trading. Don't, don't, like, go and spend, like, 150 plat on, like, trading. Uh, if you can wait, wait for it to go down, I'm sure it'll be, like, 20 plat for a set, if that, uh, pretty soon here, once people figure out how mediocre this frame is. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's Nezha. Very, very disappointing. I, I wish, I wish he was good. His visual design's kinda neat. He's got a big ring on his back. It's kinda cool. Uh, oh, you know what? Actually, there's something I forgot to mention about Nezha. Uh, this big ring on his back, you know whenever bombards are firing at you. If you throw it and then teleport to it, it breaks the bombard rocket, like, uh, tracking. So there's that. I mean, that's a use, I suppose, right? That's pretty good. He's got that. So I guess he's fine, right? No, unfortunately not. Uh, but yeah, that's Nezha. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.